What's going on, Dodgers fans? We're back. Thank you all for listening to the Incline Dodgers, of course. Today, we will be covering the National League Championship Series. Your Los Angeles Dodgers back in the dance, and they're taking on the Atlanta Braves again. Now, I could have been lazy and just uploaded last year's episode when it was the Dodgers and Braves, but I'm sure listeners would have caught on right away. But here we go. Here we go. The Dodgers are actually going to be the road team to start the series. They have to go to Atlanta, and the first game will start Saturday evening on TBS once again with the same wonderful crew, although they are adding Jeff Francoeur, who did once play for the Braves. Now... This is the exciting part on the incline. We sent him out to Atlanta because we want him to cover the series for us. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I don't want to get him in trouble, but it's Jake Reiner actually live in Atlanta. Yes, I'm on the road in Atlanta for uh, CBS Los Angeles, uh, Sports Central CBS uh, with Jim Hill. Um, I'll be out here uh, covering the uh, pre and post game uh, for uh, the Dodgers here in Atlanta for the first two games on Saturday and Sunday. So be sure to tune in channel two, channel nine, uh, mainly KCAL nine uh, in the evening around uh, 1030 your time. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I'm also excited to uh, provide some sort of behind the scenes look Uh uh, while here covering the uh, the Dodgers in Atlanta for our incline listeners, also on Twitter. So follow me along on there, and uh, I'll give you the uh, inside story. David Rosenthal, how are you feeling about this series? I'm feeling good. Uh, I will not be covering it from Atlanta. I will be covering it in the Bay Area, where I have since built a boat so I can sail on everybody's tears up here. Uh, <laughs> this has been a wonderful experience for me as someone who lives in the Bay Area. Uh, and it's only just beginning because I'm going to take the rest of the month, maybe the year, to enjoy this victory over the Giants. That being said, we're taking on the Braves. I feel good about it. They won 88 games in the regular season. Uh, no Ronald Acuna Jr. Pitching rotation is strong. But after that, they're vulnerable. The bullpen is bad. Their offense is, is hit or miss. We're not going to see Jorge Soler, it looks like. So, I'm feeling good. Overall, feeling pretty damn good. Yes, we're going to break it all down. Starting now, David mentioned it. The Braves only won 88 games while the Dodgers won 106 and a wild card game, and they beat the Giants, the best team in baseball. So on paper, this looks like the, this is the Dodgers series to win, but we made a horrible mistake last year by saying that the NLDS between the Dodgers and Padres was essentially the NLCS. Yeah. And Boy, did that backfire when the Braves had us in a 3-1 hole. Fortunately, we know the rest of the story. But you got to think the Braves are hungry for more. <laughs> Feeling that from the Padres. They probably have payback on their mind because we essentially stole in some of their minds their potential World Series. So let's start with the pitching matchups. Game one, we know Max Fried has been announced as the starter for the Braves. We saw him quite a bit last postseason and we saw him pretty recently at dodger stadium where max scherzer actually battled max Fried. i was at that game i remember austin barnes hitting a home run off him we don't know exactly who the game one starter yet is for the dodgers but presumably it is going to be max scherzer yeah he should be good to go after that one inning in san francisco uh to take the mound in game one uh, you got to figure that uh, Julio Urias and Walker Bueller are out. Obviously um, I don't think that game one, they're going to go bullpen. Um, that would be weird, but you never know with the Dodgers. Uh, we, we thought uh, Urias was going to start yesterday and he didn't. Um, and we know, we know how the rest of that went. So Max Fried is really good. Uh, that's just plain and simple. And he pitches us really well. Um, so that's something that, uh, I am going to, obviously we're all going to keep an eye on, but the, but he's left-handed. So it does tend to give the Dodgers some troubles, although they've kind of break broken out of that, uh, that kind of stigma that they can't hit lefties because they have been able to hit lefties, uh, not as well as righties, but it's not as bad as it once was. Yeah. Agreed. Freed is the, Freed is the problem of this, this rotation. Uh, he is definitely their ace, uh, and he's going to give us problems as for who starts for the Dodgers. I wouldn't be, honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to starting a bullpen game in game one. Let Scherzer, you know, recover fully. 
throw him out there for game two, get Bueller and Julio Arias on normal rest for games two and three and figure it out from there uh, for games three and four and figure it out from there. Either way, it can't go wrong. I, I'm feeling very, very confident. Um, you know, I, we'll talk about, I'm, I'm guessing we'll talk about Ian Anderson and Charlie Morton here in a bit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they only needed four games to take care of the Brewers who everyone thought were, you know, basically going to roll them over. So not to be understated. Yeah. A little bit more about Max Fried since he is the ace of the staff. He finished the season with a 14 and seven record a three Oh four ERA in the second half. He really turned it on 174 ERA after the all-star break and in the postseason against the Brewers, he absolutely shut them down. They had no answer for him yeah. with, with freed his best pitch is his curveball. If he has that, he's really tough to hit, but his fastball and his sinker have been a lot more susceptible this season. So if freed doesn't have command of his secondary pitches, look for the Dodgers to sit on some of those heaters and that's probably how they get to him. And it, it helps that we saw him not too long ago. So advantage Dodgers there. Uh, so yes, Ian Anderson will probably be their game two starter. I'm assuming that because Charlie Morton's already started two games for the Braves in the NLDS. Ian Anderson had a good season in his second year, nine and five with a 358 ERA. Um, not too much to add with Anderson other than that changeup is pretty devastating. Is there anything else you guys wanted to talk about with Anderson? He's, he's good. I mean, he gave us a little bit of trouble in last year's NLCS. I'm sure everybody remembers uh, the Dodgers eventually got to him. Uh, but that changeup is similar to Logan Webb's changeup where it starts out as a strike for pretty much the entire, the entirety of its path to the plate and then just dives. So it's going to be a tough freed and Anderson are going to be tough, but Charlie Morton, as we've seen, the Dodgers have had success against, and he doesn't scare me in the least bit. I mean, he had two starts against the Brewers, 9.1 innings, four earned runs. So Anderson and Freed are where you got to worry. Yeah, I'm not too worried about Charlie Morton either because I, the Dodgers have have hit him in the past, and he he can be vulnerable, even though he is is particularly good in the postseason. But the Dodgers can handle him. Uh, Ian Anderson had a decent outing. His uh, one start against the Brewers, he went five innings, three hits, um, and no runs allowed. Uh, six strikeouts. Uh, Max Freed in his start went six innings, three hits, no runs, and nine strikeouts against the against the Brewers. But the caveat there is that the Brewers just have a terrible offense. So I don't know whether to to look at it as uh, an intimidating factor that these guys really dealt well against the Brewers. But um, the Brewers are, are a terrible offense. They've not uh, run into this Dodgers offense, and we know that on any given day, this Dodgers offense could could run up the score nine, 10 runs. So on the Dodgers side of things, it's going to get a little tricky here. I don't think Walker Bueller or Urias will be ready to start game two. Not yeah. enough rest, right? So the Dodgers kind of have to decide things, whether it's going to be game one or game two. One of these games on the road, it's either going to be a bullpen game or they have to now go to the rusty Tony Gonsolin in a kind of a similar situation we saw in the NLCS last season when they had to roll out Tony in game two because Kershaw was scratched with the back injury and that ultimately backfired. Yeah. And, and Tony Gonsolin um, who hasn't really been that sharp when he has been in there consistently uh, I'm even less confident with him in allowing this much time to pass in between his outings. So yeah, you may see Tony out there. Um, we haven't seen David Price, uh, so that could also be an option. Um, Ooh, God, I hope not. But but that's you know that that's what that's what we're looking at here. I, I you know as someone that hates bullpen games in principle, in this situation, I think you almost have to do one uh, just just to give your starters uh, the rest that they need when they go out there. I mean, we only have three. Yeah, I mean, the bullpen game is is essentially going to be a bullpen game with Tony Gonsolin pitching either, you know, the bulk of the innings or even starting it, and then it turns into a bullpen game. Uh, I don't think they're going to let Tony Gonsolin go through the order more than twice, no matter how well he's pitching. Uh, so that's, you know, you're looking at four or five innings max out of Gonsolin. So I think they can get by with that. And I think they should, whether it's game one or game two, absolutely implore that so you can get Bueller and Arias on regular rest in games three and four. That being yeah. said, all you need to do is win one of these first two games in Atlanta. 
Yep. You, then you come home, three home games with your two starters. Uh, you, you're going to be fine. Yeah. And yeah, also, sure. it does bode well the fact that uh, Urias and Bueller, even though Bueller pitched on short rest, they didn't really go that long in those games. So um, if they did want to start them kind of on short ish rest, I mean, I guess I'd be okay with that. But I'd rather I'd rather give them the the recovery time that they need. Yeah. Yep. And I guess looking at the Braves uh, fourth man, I'm going to assume it's going to be who Oscar, you know, uh, yeah, I butchered his name. 405 ERA, righty, not the sharpest pitcher. So look for him, but he'll work out probably better than Kyle Wright because you can't get much worse than what he did last season. Enoa is actually very talented. He was he was having himself quite a season before he punched a wall and broke yeah. his hand. Uh, so you know he hasn't had that much time to get back to form, but he's not you know he's not Kyle Wright. He's, was, he's was, wasn't he the guy that hit grand slam this year? Yes. So also watch out for his bat, apparently. Right. <laughs> so let's move on to the bullpen. You know, the Braves, respectable bullpen. They added some weapons uh, around the trade deadline. They finished 10th in Major League Baseball, 397 ERA. Uh, the guys that you'll have to keep your eye out on, Will Smith, the closer. We all know what happened when Will Smith faced Will Smith last season. Maybe we'll get that again. Luke Jackson's actually had a really great season. Righty, sub two ERA. AJ Minner, not as sharp as he was last season, but a lefty. Tyler Matzek has kind of emerged as their best lefty, although he tailed off near the end of the regular season. Another lefty. Chris Martin probably could be in the mix, but I believe they left him off the NLDS roster. So that's a question mark. So we'll see if they bring him back on. Jesse Chavez, remember him, former Dodger not too long ago. All of a sudden having a, a resurgence season with the Braves, low ERA in the two range. He's like 37 as well. Just seems to travel team to team and latched on. He's got to be the, the record holder for current longest major leaguer, right? Like, um, he's absolutely got to oh, be. Pujols. Okay. Pitcher, fine. Pitcher, yeah. Okay. I'll give I'll give you that. And then Rich Rodriguez. Uh, Pirates righty that a lot of teams, a lot of fans wanted on their team. They also left him off the NLDS roster. Kind of has similar issues like Gratterall, where he doesn't really miss bats, making him very prone to giving up the long ball. So we'll see if he makes the roster, and then they have some other guys. I don't think we need to really worry about them. But I'll let you guys comment on the Braves' bullpen maybe in a second. But I want to talk about the Dodgers' bullpen. We saw that they rolled out eight relievers. I think we're going to have to see a change, and we'll get to this when we talk about the Braves' lineup. But I think they need to add a ninth guy, not only because it's going to be a seven-game series, but the Braves have a lot of good lefties, and you can't just have Vessia and then David Price. I agree. I agree. And especially because, you know, the elephant in the room here is Jock Peterson. Uh, he had the most RBIs for them in the NLDS. I think he had five, and he didn't even start two of those games, I don't think. But what does Jock Peterson hit well? Fastballs. What does Alex Vessia do well? fastballs so if you're looking to get a jock stopper you may need to add another left-handed pitcher here so That's there's it. that justin brule then that would, would be, be the answer yes would be the option which is fine i like him no and and also yeah jock peterson is i think we just we we should spend a good amount of time talking about him because this this is going to be one of the more interesting storylines and <laughs> it's something we know that the tbs broadcast will talk about ad nauseum but yeah. The Braves bullpen is is quite good. The majority of those pitchers that you mentioned, Kevin, gave up zero runs in the NLDS. Um, they were really good uh, against against the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, Will Smith has is is very vulnerable, uh, and he's beatable. So it's not like facing Doval. Even though the Dodgers got to Doval, I I was much more intimidated by him than I was by Will Smith, and not just because. Our Will Smith crushed his dreams in the last in the last NLCS, but just based on what I've seen throughout the season, he's blown a lot of saves, um, more saves than you'd like. Um, so, so he is he can be good, but but I'm not too worried about him. AJ Minter is pretty decent, um, and Luke Jackson, like Kevin said, has had a, has had a decent year. So their bullpen is good, but it doesn't you know doesn't have me shaking in my boots. Definitely. I, I would agree. Uh, you, I mean, 
look, the, the guy he's got to worry about is Tyler Matzik because left-handed reliever to begin with, he's been their best reliever, including Smith, uh, dating back to the regular season, hasn't given up a run in, in his last seven regular season innings or in his all four postseason appearances. So he's cooking right now. He also lived in a van by the river not too long ago, two years ago, as the broadcast likes to harp on very often. So, you know, he's gritty. That's the guy you want to avoid. When we were talking about last night, and we did talk about the Giants and Dodgers series, in case you didn't know. Make sure to listen to that episode. It's out there already. But one of the relievers, I forgot to mention why I thought the 2020 bullpen was so good, and I'm assuming he won't be on the roster, is Victor Gonzalez. If Victor Gonzalez was on, this would have been the perfect guy to have uh, complimenting Bessia. So yeah. I'm going to assume they're going to leave him off, and it'll probably be Brule, given just what's, what's been going on in Velasquez, the other guy. To, yeah. just to an experience so i am on board i think brule will be that ninth guy whether they leave off mckinney or souza i guess a lot will head will um ride if max muncie's able to play and that's another question mark we're gonna have to wait on Did yeah they, I, they they had mckinstry on the on the roster or no no he was just he well he was on the the wild card roster then yes okay okay that's Never when mind. they carry that's when they carried a lot of a lot of hitters and not a oh lot of yeah pitchers. yes exactly. but uh yeah, like you said, it's if any if they're gonna add a pitcher, I would bet a lot it's gonna be Justin Brule just to counter Jock. Probably need another arm in a seven game series anyway. Uh, hitting wise, I think you got to take off Souza uh, yep. because if you're not gonna have Max Muncie and you're gonna play Lux in the outfield and you want to move Cody Bellinger in the outfield late in the game, you're gonna need Billy McKinney at first unless you want to put Pujols in there. But right handed guys off the bench, you're gonna have Pujols and you're gonna have Austin Barnes. So I think that's the move. I think what I would do is I would take off Souza and add Justin Brule, let the rest ride, even though I don't feel good about David Price, but we'll see. Yeah, definitely. So let's talk some Braves hitters. They have a very potent lineup. Yeah. The one thing that I continue to kind of go back and forth on, are they better overall than last season? I guess not, given just Ronald Acuna Jr. tore his ACL and won't be playing. But they added a lot of great bats and going through the order let's talk about travis darno the catcher really tailed off this season batting in the low 200s i feel like one of you guys called him out last season saying this season couldn't be for reals and he's really fell back to planet earth freddie freeman obviously one of their best bats if not the best bat mvp last season always hits close to 30 home runs bats 300 hit the game winning home run off Josh Hader, which actually sent the Braves to this round. So don't sleep on Freddie Freeman. Ozzy Albies, a switch hitter. Uh, what's interesting about Albies is he hits lefties a lot better, but most of his power comes from the, when he's hitting from the right side. So it's kind of confusing when it comes to Ozzy Albies. I do recall that last postseason he hit what two home runs in the first two games and Mark Melanson, that ginger caught both of them. Okay. Yes, and and they were and they were off le lefties. They were off lefties. So. Yep. One of them being Jake McGee. Yeah, Jake McGee. Yes, uh, that's a, that's what I thought. <laughs> Dansby Swanson, power hitting shortstop, but I think the guy that really stands out in this lineup to me is Austin Riley. There you go. Yeah. This this guy might be more deadly now than Freddie Freeman, kind of similar to Tyler O'Neill in a sense where batted three oh three. 898 OPS, finished the year with 33 home runs, 107 RBIs, absolutely crushes, uh, absolutely crushed in the second half, apologies, with 333 batting average, 19 home runs, 976 OPS, and with a little bit reverse splits. Although he hits lefty well, hits lefties well, wow, I can't talk, 30 of his 33 home runs came against right-handed pitchers. Austin Riley, I remember last year the Dodgers were able to contain him pretty well, but this year he's kind of gone off, uh, and he's yeah. it's kind of been a breakout year for him. So he's definitely a guy you gotta you gotta keep an eye on. Uh, Adam Duvall, uh, Eddie Rosario, um, mm -hmm. those are guys that are dangerous bats. Eddie Rosario, another lefty. Jock Peterson, lefty. Freddie Freeman, lefty. So yeah, that's that goes back to what we were talking about with trying to add another bullpen piece to kind of counteract these Braves hitters, but they went out and got a bunch of outfielders after uh, Ronald Acuna jr. Went down. And if they don't have Jorge Soler, that's going to be a big hit, but 
they've got enough they've got enough offense without Soler to make them dangerous. Yeah, just real quick on Riley. Last year in the NLCS, he kind of looked like a deer in the headlights. You know, he didn't really have his feet underneath him. Uh, he had that costly uh, misplay at third base with the uh, I forget what like the base running blunder. Yeah, the base running blunder uh, with the Justin Turner play. Uh, this year is not the same. He is a top 10 MVP candidate straight up. Uh, that's the guy you got to worry about. It doesn't look like they're going to have Solaire. They said they're planning to go without him. He still has not been cleared by the COVID protocol people. Uh, so it looks like it's going to be like Jake mentioned, uh, Rosario Duvall, Jock Peterson and uh, Heredia in the outfield. So mm -hmm. Still potent, but it's definitely a, a, a hit to their power without Solaire. And they were hitting him leadoff, too, yeah. which is quite an interesting philosophy that you're seeing more and more teams do. Red Sox, Schwarber sometimes. So Yeah. Yeah, Rosario hit a tying two-run home run, I want to say, um, in that Max Scherzer start where Bruce Targrado was the reliever. Rosario was that bat who hit the home run. Uh, yeah, Max Scherzer about a month ago pitched six shutout innings, if you want to recall with a bad hamstring, apparently the Braves had no answer for him. Nine strikeouts, no runs. Adam Duvall, funny enough, was on the Braves team last season. And in the NLCS, his very first at bat had to come out with, I believe an oblique strain. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. But the guy, they just, just real quick. The guy they replaced Solaire with is Christian Pache. We saw him in the NL, in the NLCS last yeah. year. He might've yeah. even been the replacement he for was. Duvall. Uh, so yeah, Mr. Replacement over there, but he's one of their, he's been one of their top prospects. So can't sleep on him. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets a start or two and possibly fellow Jew, maybe who knows? Uh, I don't know. Remember, remember that whole controversy? <laughs> Not really a controversy, but the necklace. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm referring to. Well, yeah, yeah. speaking of necklaces, speaking of fellow Jew, Jock Peterson back to him, two home runs in the NLDS. He has 11 career postseason home runs now. I, it looks like the Braves are going to finally start him because I don't know what they were thinking. The first three games, he was on the bench. He went three. They for weren't three. thinking. That's the answer. <laughs> three for three, all pinch hit, um, all pinch hit uh, hits. And yeah, so Jock Peterson, I don't know what to expect out of the series. Apparently he just was text FaceTiming with Justin Turner and some other Dodgers. So they're still in talks, but yeah, that's going to be probably the most, um, in compelling storyline of this postseason series, at least to start. Yeah, I mean, he won. Um, he won a game for the Braves uh, in in that NLDS when he came off the bench and hit that three run homer. I forget if it was in game three or four. I think it was three. Three. Um, just an unbelievable postseason bat. A, a bat that you know Dodgers fans I know out there miss him quite a bit, um, and. And Kike Hernandez too is is lighting the world on fire in the postseason. Just hit a home run in the, in the first game of the ALCS. So um, it's don't, don't uh, let Molly Knight hear that. Yeah. Well, it, it, honestly, this is going to be fun. I mean, this is a fun storyline. I think um, to have Jock Peterson uh, go up against his old team, a team that he that he came that he came up with, grew up with. Um, it, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I just. I mean, I just hope he's, he doesn't beat the Dodgers. And, yeah. and, and, you know, that that's the one thing I'm worried about because because we all know what, what a great postseason player he is. It, 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 maybe the Braves have figured it out by now and they'll start him, but we've all known this. Is my memory failing me or did he homer against us this year when he was with the Cubs? I, I believe he did. I don't think he did. Didn't he, like, okay. almost do? He, like, almost did. Oh, yeah, there was that moment. Where, where he thought he walked it off yeah. and it was, and, it, and the ball died in the outfield. Okay. But well, he, yeah. I, so bottom line, don't throw him fastballs up in the zone. This team should know that better than anyone. So I don't want to see any, any people challenging Jock Peterson with fastballs in the zone. Don't let him beat you. Jock Tober is very real. Don't dick around, throw him junk outside and low period. That's how you beat Jock Peterson. So let's talk some Dodgers. I know the fans want to hear about the Dodgers. First question mark is they're facing a lefty. So now Dave Roberts probably has to adjust the lineup. Let's start with, let's assume Max Muncy's out, at least for yeah, game one. I think back, it's a fair assumption. Do you put AJ Pollock back in the lineup? Yes. Yes. 
So does that mean you bench Lux or Bellinger? I guess I guess it'd have to be Lux because Bellinger's playing first. Well, that's another question because if Pujols. it's a left-hander, then you got Big Albert. Okay. Well, so I mean, if Pujols, I mean, that's still that still would mean Lux probably out though. Yeah, I think it's very possible you see Pujols at first, Pollock in left, and Taylor in center against Freed. Yeah, just stack the, just stack the lineup with righties. Yeah, you can turn it over when he comes out. Exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, okay, Especially, that's... and and I'll just say this, and and the reason. Um, the way I feel about this, the reason I'm, I'm confident in putting a, an entire right-handed lineup in there, even though it may not be the, the most, you know, talented right-handed lineup or talented lineup, I should say that they could throw out there is that it is game one. It's not, it's not do or die. You're not, you know, yes, you, yes. You don't want to lose game one. Obviously you don't want to lose any game, but um, I just think that in terms of trying to get to max freed, you want, every opportunity you can you want every advantage possible advantage that you can that you can get good point so gabe kapler before the nlds said that their whole strategy was to do everything they can to make sure Corey seager is recorded out we know what happened last nlcs Corey seager went bonkers on this braves eight home runs or whatever absolutely annihilated them do you think Brian Snitker is going to have the same mindset of we have to make sure we get Seager out at all costs? And if that's the case, do you guys have any predictions of maybe which Dodger turns it on this series might win the NLCS MVP or are you going back home to Corey Seager? I will say this. I remember on the, on the, on the last episode we were just recorded yesterday where I said that my prediction about the Dodgers in five was correct. I also remember predicting that Mookie Betts would have an incredible series. So that's I'm right, si- Jake. That's yeah, right. Bring exactly. It up again. Exactly. Yeah. I will. I will. Cause I, I, I the people have to know. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go with Mookie Betts again. I think he continues to rake and he continues to be that spark plug uh, we have at the top of the lineup. And yeah, Brian Snicker can do all he wants to try to get Corey Seager out, but Corey Seager is not the only guy that can do damage in this lineup. Everyone else can as well. Yeah, I think one of the coolest stats that I was reading today was the Dodgers managed to beat the Giants with Trey Turner and Justin Turner going a combined four for 42. Yeah. Uh, My prediction for who goes off, I don't – it's tough to make one because in a fully healthy lineup, Max Muncy would be my pick. I love his matchups against these pitchers. So instead, I will go with Corey Seager. Uh, I'm hoping Trey Turner is the guy, but – I just I'm not willing to go there right now from what I've seen from him at the plate in the playoffs. So I'm gonna stick with Corey Seager. Uh, hopefully Mookie Betts keeps up what he's doing, but also don't sleep on Will Smith. Uh, he hits right-handers really well, and they got a bunch of righties besides uh, Freed and Matzik. Absolutely. I really, really, really want to say Corey Seager, but I'm worried that I'm gonna jinx him. So I don't know what to do. Maybe I should just say Gavin Lux and hope that it works out. Not a bad pick the way he's swinging the bat. <laughs> but yes. You want my bold prediction though? One quick bold prediction. Well, we're going to have Lux. bold predictions. Let's do it right now then. Okay. Just real quick. Ga- I think Gavin Lux unlo- unlocks the power of the series. I think he hits a home run this series. We haven't seen yeah. one from him in a while. We have not. So my bold prediction last series was I said that the Dodgers would have would held the would uh, how do I say this right? The Dodgers would have two games against the Giants where they prevented the Giants from hitting home runs, and I said that would happen in two games, and that happened. And I feel like that was actually a pretty good prediction, given the fact that the Giants are such a home run heavy dependent team. Yep, first in baseball. Yeah. So last year I said that the Braves would have a catastrophic meltdown in the bullpen, and wow, that hit the nail on the head. And I pissed off Braves Twitter. People were coming at me, and that's what cost them that series. Uh, Jake, if you have yours, go ahead. Cause I'm still trying to think what the best one for me would be right now. Cause I want to get it right. Um, bold prediction. I say AJ Pollock figures it out. I say I like that he, I say that he has not, he, he's not going to win NLCS MVP, but he's going, he's going to produce for once in his life as a Dodger in the postseason. All right. I, I got my bold prediction now. 
I don't even know if he has a cannon or not behind the plate, but I say the Dodgers steal at least four bags in this series against Travis Darnode. I'm hoping Trey Turner gets on base and can just unlock true Trey Turner and be a nightmare on the base paths for the Atlanta Braves. So I'm well, that's that- what that's what that was was weird to me in the Giants series, which was Trey Turner when he did get on base, he didn't go anywhere. Yeah. So I definitely would like to see that as well. It's interesting. I've noticed the Dodgers, you know, early in the game or when they're not, you know, really at the risk of being eliminated, kind of tend to be passive on the base pass. But last night when you saw they weren't getting a lot going offensively, Mookie Betts got on late in that game. Then Dave Roberts said, all right, let him loose. So it's, I, I'd like to see him do it more often, you know, not necessarily when their backs are up against the wall and we're clinging to life. Uh, so hopefully, yeah, like Jake said, just uh, unload Trey and Mookie on the bases. And, and Lux and Bellinger are more than capable of swiping bags. We should be running ragged on these guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Any other things you wanted to cover in this NLCS before – I ask one more question to you guys. I mean, I, I think I, I yeah, go ahead. I think we nailed the roster. I, I think it's going to be the same. Uh, maybe the only change would be adding Brule, taking off Souza. So I think that that's going to be the squad they're rolling out with. I really don't think Muncie is going to be there, uh, barring a miraculous recovery. Then you can always have McKinney uh, or someone fake an injury. Uh, you know play a soccer player and just pretend to fall down and oh my knee hurts so that's that's doable and as for the brave side i they're they're beatable they're that's a very beatable team uh it's just a matter if the dodgers are going to execute and you're gonna need both turners to execute way more than they have been if that's the key if they can produce this series is is going to be a delight for dodgers fans yeah so here's some key stats on the braves they went 42 and 38 at home thus meaning they're not a very dominating team in Atlanta. In one-run games, they actually struggled. They went 26-31, and 31, which mean, that tells me that this team relies a lot on blowing out bad competition. They also play in the NL East, for crying out loud. They weren't really that tested overall. And against the Dodgers this season, the Dodgers won that series four games to two, including a sweep at Dodger Stadium. Yeah. I I guess for Dodgers fans, I I wouldn't want anybody taking this team lightly, even though I think that the toughest series that they're going to face was the Giants um, leading up, leading up to the world series. Like I, I, I'm totally on board with that, but this team should not be taken lightly. And in fact, there are some batters in this lineup that I would fear far more than any of the batters in the Giants lineup. Guys like Freddie Freeman, Austin Riley, Ozzie Albies, Jock Peterson, the list goes on. Um, Eddie Rosario. I mean, these guys can do damage. And if the Dodgers pitching can limit the damage and not let them beat you with the long ball and the Dodgers offense can be a little more consistent than it was in the Giants series, you know, not feast or famine one night, they score 10 the next night they score one. Like then, then it's a recipe for success for success. Right on. Um, what was the last thing? So the question is, me and Dave were actually talking about this before we went on the air. So we have our answers, but Jake, you can start this one off. Who do you want to see win the ALCS? Red Sox or Astros? Hmm. My, in my heart, I want the Astros. Um, just because it would be so sweet to not only take out the Giants – but then take out the trash rows yeah. and, and just take back that 2017 title. That would be sweet. Um, but in terms of matchups, I don't know. I mean, they're, I'm not really like, you know, that bothered by either pitching staff. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm looking at, you know, cause Chris sale is not Chris sale of what he once was. The Red Sox pitching is kind of up in the air uh mccullers we don't know if he's coming back for the astros so yeah i mean they're they're very this is going to be a good series the alcs they're kind of very evenly matched teams uh when when you when you look at uh both of them side by side 
But if I'm if I want one team, I want to take out the Astros. Let's go. Yeah. So for me, it's I, I want the Red Sox. Uh, I think they are overplaying their ability right now. Uh, their pitching staff could not scare me less. Uh, Evaldi's good, yes. Sale can be good, yes. Uh, after that, it's disgusto town, like complete garbage all around. Uh, their bullpen is bad. Uh, and offensively, Kike Hernandez doesn't scare me. Sorry, he's playing really well, but sorry, doesn't scare me. Uh, Devers and Bogarts is the problem. Schwarber's good. Yeah, Renfro's producing uh, a couple other guys. But in terms of the Astros offense, that what is What about enough. Verdugo? Yeah, Verdugo will get on base. J.D. Martinez. Martinez can hit the ball out of the park. Yeah, hasn't been playing that well, though. Uh, on the other side, you got Kyle Tucker, uh, Correa, Altuve, Jordan Alvarez, uh, Guriel, AL batting champ. That's that's an offense I don't want to face. Uh, and either way you look at it, if the Dodgers play them, it's going to be a chance for revenge because technically the Red Sox cheated as well. Yeah. Uh, so look, miss me with that. I don't need the Astros. They can just lose and continue to get older and lose Correa and be sad for the rest of their franchise ex- existence. And to pick a side, I'm going the Astros, especially if Lance McCullers is out. I don't know how he can even pitch at this point with a bad forearm. Give me the Astros. Like Jake said, sweet payback for 2017. And especially since we'll be the home team this um, once again, mm-hmm. I don't think they're gonna have the trash cans. So Houston should not be that same slug fest like it was last time. I'm not scared of their bullpen either in Houston. Pedro Baez can't even pitch for them. Yimi Garcia is one of their high leverage guys. Give me that schmuck any day of the week. <laughs> Let's move on. Closing thoughts. Let's hear them right now. Go ahead, Jake. My closing thoughts are, I think the Dodgers are going to the World Series. And the, it's, not, it's not a hot take. It's not a bold prediction. But I think they will get this done. And I, and I think uh, I'm not going to make a prediction because I'm quitting while I'm ahead. Uh, oh, because... that's soft, man. Come on. You ride the hot streak. Are... Ah, Don't do it. Fuck. Don't do it. Do it. Ah. Give me something. Right. You said All they're right. going to the World Series. Give me how many games? Dodgers and five. Okay. okay. There you go. Braves will get one. I don't know which one, but they'll get one. My final thoughts. You ready for this? I don't think the Dodgers are going to the World Series. I think they're winning the World Series. Period. Uh, I don't know how many games are going to beat the Braves in. Maybe six. Doesn't matter. Uh, if they play the Astros or the Red Sox, I believe in this team. I believe we're going to get Muncie back for the World Series. Let's ride. I think we got this. All right, here we go real quick. Make sure to subscribe to the Incline Dodgers wherever you get your podcast. We're proud to be partnered now with Fansided. Go to fansided.com or dodgersway.com where you can see our podcast directly on the feed. Give us five stars if you love our content. And as I mentioned earlier, we did a reaction show to the Dodgers kicking the Giants' ass and sending their fans home crying. So listen to that one as well. You'll see that where this episode's found. And lastly, go Dodgers. I love 2021. This team is just awesome. Let's go, baby.